This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. State Representative Tara Tuhill talks about unemployment during the pandemic and more next. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for being with us. I'm Ken Carr with your local information. We wrap up our recent political series here on SSP TV News with State Representative Tara Tuhill today. If you missed any of our other interviews with former United States Congressman Lou Barletta, State Senator John Udichek, and United States Congressman Matt Cartwright, you can go to our website or YouTube channel to watch them. Now, here's Janine Lassant. First and foremost, you have been appointed to uh, the Government Oversight Committee. So for us constituents out here who you represent, tell us first of all, what does that mean for us? This is a chairmanship, which uh, all of the standing committees have chairs. And this is a new committee that was created last session. And I was on that committee. Um, usually there's a lot of lawyers on that committee. And we receive referrals for investigation, and they come from either the Speaker of the House, the Majority Leader, or the Minority Leader. And so um, they have investigations on anything associated with the executive branch and how it's functioning. So right now, people have a lot of questions about government, especially during COVID-19. And uh, there's a lot of questions where people want to see that the money, the taxpayer money they pay goes where it's supposed to go and that government is functioning properly. So these are all confidential investigations that take place. Um, but, but, you know, any sorts of complaints that constituents have, um, any of those could be fodder for an investigation. So it's also heavily bipartisan. So last year we had a lobbying reform bill we did. So there was an investigation, we had a hearing, and now there's going to be legislation that comes out of that lobbying reform bill on the way lobbying in Harrisburg operates and how it needs to be remedied. So that's going to actually result in legislation for reform. Um, how has... Uh, practicing law or laws been changed since COVID and the pandemic? Uh, a lot of attorneys had trouble, I think, um, getting to their clients. And we had complaints actually about um, how their businesses were having issues. And I did see that the county gave out money to some law firms as small businesses that were on a list that went out um, from the county and now there's going to be a third wave of money available, uh, and that would be for all businesses. We have a lot of businesses that are in crisis right now, and we have money coming in legislation um, for these businesses. It just passed through the Senate, and then we also um, have money that was coming down through the counties, and the county managed that money, um, and there's hopefully going to be this third wave of that money that comes about so if people have questions about that, they should really call the office. Um, we get calls all the time from people that missed that deadline before. So we, we try to communicate that as much as possible, that they don't miss that county grant deadline. Since the pandemic first started, your office really has been inundated. Um, it's almost like you're the unemployment office because you have to deal with those phone calls. You have to deal with complaints from, from people who can't get through anywhere else. And when they call your office, so what are the, the major complaints now and how are you helping people right here in your hometown? It's an honor to be able to help. And my staff, the, the phone rings off the hook here. Um, the staff works really hard on these unemployment cases and we get them all of the time, um, all day long. And so I did talk to labor and industry this week and I was like, are you planning on hiring some more people to process these claims? Because it's really unfair that the legislators um, and our offices, we have many other duties um, and that really now people have to wait in line while we are doing unemployment claims. So we're here to help and, and we're glad to help. And um, my staffer Malia in particular has a lot of labor and industry and unemployment uh, expertise. 
and um, it, we work on it all weekend. I mean, the, the amount of cases seems to be growing uh, for unemployment. It, it's not getting better. And um, some people have been waiting still, like the, the case has been messed up or it's been languishing uh, three months and people are really destitute. So we're here to help, uh, but we also wanna see labor and industry step up to the plate, have better training of their uh, employees, maybe get their employees back into the office if it's hard to be remote. And also some of these people that are out of work, maybe they could get hired and help work on these unemployment claims. The system needs to function a lot better than it is for sure. Today's news feature is brought to you by The Cheese Store and more. Go to their Facebook page to see their specials and check out their catering menu. Time now for weather on SSP TV News. Here's our full forecast from the National Weather Service. On Tuesday, snow mainly before 11 a.m. will have a high near 30 degrees, new snow accumulation of around 2 inches. Tuesday night, mostly cloudy with a low in the teens. Wednesday is mostly cloudy with a high in the 20s. Wind gusts as high as 20 miles per hour. Wednesday night, a chance of snow showers, cloudy with a low around 20 degrees. Thursday, we have a chance of snow showers. It will be cloudy with a high in the 20s. Thursday night, snow showers likely cloudy with a low near 20 degrees. Friday, there's a chance of snow showers, mostly cloudy with a high in the 20s. And Friday night, mostly cloudy cloudy with a low in the teens. Now some weekend sports notes on the SSP TV Standard Speaker scoreboard. Kelly Kostineski has a great article in the Standard Speaker about the Hazleton area swim team. Ryan Kovalik and Tino Diute both got to 1,000 points recently, and head coach Michelle Yakubowski got her 500th victory. The boys and girls are both 5-0 in the Wyoming Valley Conference coming into this week. In basketball, the Hazleton area girls and the Marion boys kept pace in their races in the Wyoming Valley Conference Division 1 and Division 3 of the Schuylkill League. The Hazleton area boys, they lost to Crest over the weekend. Coming up, we talk with members of the Hazelton Area High School wrestling team as they chase a league championship. Next, how some local Girl Scouts are helping the community and how you can get your Girl Scout cookies this year. In the SSP TV Spotlight, we visit a new autism clinic that opened in our area recently. We'll be right back. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News wants to congratulate the 51 members of MMI Prep's FBLA club as the students placed in several categories in the regional competition and now 23 students have advanced to the 2021 FBLA State Leadership Conference. Registration is now open for Valley West Little League. Players can be registered every Saturday until February 13th from 1 to 3 p.m. and on every Wednesday until February 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. Registration is being held at the Whispering Willows Field Press Box. And SSP TV News would like to remind everyone to keep their furry friends warm and safe during this winter season. SSB TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Evelyn Kirch, daughter of Hazleton, services will be private on the Crofton News Funeral Home. Mark Lishka, age 55, of McAdoo, the Damiano Funeral Home will announce their arrangements. Nicholas Shedden, age 92, of Hazleton, services will be private on the Harmon Funeral Home. And Bernice Helen Spore, age 84, of Hazleton, a funeral service will be held on Wednesday at 11 a.m. at the Butler Chapel at the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the Funeral Home. Today's social and obituary report is brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. Call 570-788-0977 or go to harmonfuneral.com.